I took cross stitch uh, to Langata Women Prison and we launched it on the 19th of December of 2016. And uh, we continue to take cross stitch there. We are now in five um, um, prisons in the country. And so what am I trying to say this morning, ladies? God has given us an opportunity. And like I told the spouses of the county, um, county spouses, that uh, the thing that you want to do sometimes is not far-fetched. Like Minister Sally has told us, it is that thing that bothers you. It is that passion that you have. What is that that makes you have sleepless nights? For me, it was the poverty that I saw in the lives of women. The women in prison that are there because of crimes of passion. What is that? that then God will help you to be able to change. And I must say that God has given us an opportunity. Maybe it is just five years, maybe it is 10 years, maybe it is 20 years like Mrs. Mary Moroto. Do not squander that time. Do something that will change the life of somebody in the society. One of the things that we are also doing, uh, of course, as our president has told us this morning, and Dr. Chuma has also told us, is climate action. And I just want to say that um, it would be nice if we partner uh, with you, especially when it comes to a green economy or climate change or greening the country, as our president has told us. And so when I spoke to the board when they came, I said that it would be nice for us to be able to do climate action together so that you can do whatever else that you want to do. You don't have um, to do women economic empowerment if that is not your passion. But I feel that uh, in this issue of climate action, because it is something that is affecting all of us, we can actually plant trees or grow trees, as we say. So our president has told us that working with government, of course, uh, seedlings will be mobilized so that these uh, trees can be grown. And I have... Um, I've adapted Kakamega Forest, about 500 acres, uh, just because we know that charity begins at home. So I just want to encourage us this morning that we can do something. Let's do at least a cleanup exercise with which one of you every year. I have listened uh, to Mrs. Wanyoni uh, on, uh, and I understand because I have uh, been part and parcel in some way of uh, NALSA, and uh, I know the kind of engagements that you go through and you facilitate and you participate in. I want to encourage you to continue to do good and to continue to support the leaders of Kenya and also to make your own indiv individual contribution towards making Kenya better. Two things that I would uh, ask of you as you do the many other things that you do and which we very sincerely appreciate, especially I do appreciate what you do. Um, greening Kenya is a collective effort. It, it's not so much about uh, being a president's project. It is really a Kenyan project because we share the country together, the environment of Kenya. Uh, we all know the adverse effects of climate change and what we need to do to mitigate and even to reverse some of the disastrous effects of climate change. And we've all committed that we will plant trees in our compounds, in our neighborhoods, in our villages, and in every other place that we can find. I want to promise you that uh, we will work together. We will mobilize uh, seedlings. We will mobilize efforts. And I'm really looking forward to your partnership, uh, and including that of your spouses in this effort. As mothers, I know you think about our country there are still too many children that um, go to school hungry. We know that in many parts of Kenya. Sometimes we take it for granted. 
for those of us who can have a meal. And uh, the government of Kenya has always tried to work with partners to um, support a school feeding program. This year, um, I want to scale that up from 2 billion shillings to 8 billion shillings every year because I want it to be possible for every child going to school to at least have one meal. And uh, I was very uh, happy to hear your chair speak to the school feeding program and especially the kitchens in, in our institutions. I have already committed myself and I have told uh, governors in, in the entire country that any county government that is going to participate in school feeding program, we are ready to match a shilling for a shilling in every county so that we can get more of our children uh, going to school and at least sharing uh, a meal. Finally, I have one more request that um, again, as mothers of our nation, many of our children, and we all know that um, unemployment is still a very big challenge in Kenya and partly contributing to the many challenges that we have as a nation. Thank you very much for what you're doing. You, you make it a lot easier for the leaders of Kenya uh, to do what they are elected uh, to do. And your support is not taken for granted. I want to say on all their behalf, asanteni sana kwa kutushugulikia na kutusaidia kwa sababu munaelewa majukumu za zingine tulizo nazo ni magumu na mambo siyo rahisi. So, uh, Mara, you don't, you rarely, in politics, you rarely get people who appreciate you. Many people are complaining, ujafanya hii, ulit promise hii, uja deliver. Wale wanakupigia kelele, unapitia malingine, unapata na tia gas, unahenda nyumani. So, hiko na mambo mingi, hii siyasa. So, uh, and it's, but it's always good when you can go home and be welcomed. And so I want to tell all of you, Asante Nisana. We have seen all the way transition from one president to another. But I want to thank God because I'm a prayerful woman, and that's what has been encouraging me all through. I want to thank even those who are new. Just keep persisting to God, and he will lead you because nothing you can do alone. And I want to thank even Her Excellency, Rachel. I've been following her all through because I know she's a prayerful woman, and I want to thank you for that. Even I said the other time, there's this preacher we always follow, Joshua Salma. If you have a privilege for that, will give us that. I want to appreciate. Another thing, I want to thank you because being a member of parliament for a long time, it's not easy. As a woman, you, have, you are the pillar. Even the Bible says that a woman is everything and the family is everything. As you go for your daily work, always remember to pray in the morning. And whenever he comes or he go out, just let him be in God's hand, because God will always guide him. And even for the transition, I want to thank him, because in everything, even in the family, you always know, even if we go out, there's a shoulder to lean on. And that's major progress that you have gone through. Because in every transition, there's different categories. But we impress every step. And that's why I say to ladies, be always there for your spouse, because there's up and there's down. Whenever you do anything, just help him. 
Whenever he's down, just remember to call God. Make a private room for your, for your home as a prayer room, and you'll never lack anything. Now, your spouse is in office. Finally, God came through. He heard our prayers. He saw your diligence, and your spouse is sitting in office. Your spouse has been given his roles, his or her roles, her responsibilities, and her mandates. And you know, in Romans 13, 1, it says God is the one who establishes leadership. So as he or she sits in that office, in that position, we must remember it is by the divine plan of God. That, so you as a spouse then has a very serious responsibility because by virtue of what I said, Romans 13, 1, that he or she is there by God's plan. And God has ordained he is going to use your spouse to fulfill his kingdom agenda, to fulfill his plan for the nation of Kenya, to fulfill the destiny of Kenya. So you play a very critical role. And that's why today I want to just address in those short minutes, what about you? We've said your spouse is in the office, he or she has got his powers, his mandates, his responsibilities and roles. But what about you? Now, there are two keys, two fundamental key roles that you play in the scheme of things under the circumstances. And the first one, we've heard it again and again and again, is to support your spouse. Fundamentally, that goes without saying. To support him, fulfill the assignment that God has given him on behalf of this nation. That is not negotiable. That is your God-given assignment. It's a mandate which you must fulfill without even blinking because it is your duty. We strive to better ourselves so as to support and complement our spouses effectively. We continue to reach out to individuals and institutions that can help us and guide us spiritually, mentally, emotionally, academically, financially, and physically to improve ourselves. Why? We aim to be the best selves, our best selves, in any given circumstance because we know that we cannot pour from an empty cup and that an empowered woman can empower others. Secondly, we know and appreciate that support from spouses of other members of parliament is essential. These are the people best placed to understand some of our unique challenges. Many times we are each struggling with issues, yet our spouses' constituents reach out to us for assurance for help, for support. It is comforting that we have each other, we spend time together, we share experiences, we encourage each other. This sisterhood is something we truly value. Thirdly, we realize that one can complement their spouse's goals by implementing their own projects. As we support our spouses, we also try to align our projects and programs to the SDGs. In the past two terms, some of the goals we have worked towards in terms of SDGs have been zero hunger. We've supported schools in terms of school kitchens. We've had good health and well-being, where some of our members have worked on health care in their constituencies. We've gone big on quality of education, promoting education, giving books. We've been very creative, giving uniforms, sanitary towels, refurbishment of learning institutions, new classrooms, that has been one of the really big goals. We've also done gender equality, where we've had teen mothers reintegrated into society. We've trained young mothers and women in general in different skills of economic empowerment. Finally, we've done clean water and sanitation. This has also been really big in terms of toilets in schools, water tanks, and um, water harvesting. 